Nin explains why ice hockey in the United Kingdom sucks. You'd think that a country of almost 70 million people could feel together a group of guys that can play the sport of ice hockey. A sport they technically invented. Yes, North Americans, ice hockey is actually a Scottish sport that was introduced into Canada. It was originally called shinty on ice, hence where the Canadians get their term shinny from. Look it up. And it's not as if they've never been good at it or had no history of it. The UK have been playing ice hockey just as long as anyone else and are one of the founding members of the International Ice Hockey Federation. They are actually former Winter Olympic gold medalists, but that was almost 100 years ago. So what's the problem? Why is ice hockey such a minority sport that's barely played or watched by anybody here in Britain compared to most of Europe who have better leagues, systems and infinitely better players? Is it the UK's knack of inventing things that they'll be bad at in the future? Or is it just the fact that we Brits have other sports that we suck at less? Before I explain, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to see my new videos as they're released. Problem number one, facilities. The city of Toronto has over 110 rinks that people can use. The UK has 56 public rinks in the entire country, and not all of them play hockey. Yes, we have less ice rinks here than a typical Canadian city. If you do the quick maths, that's 1.25 million people per rink. And as you can imagine, because there's so few rinks to use, you sometimes have to travel some distance in order to use them. The fact that ice time is expensive and the long distances that people have to travel to use them means that people just don't bother. Which brings me to problem number two, lack of participation. The distance between rinks and the limited and expensive ice time is a problem. But the biggest problem is the lack of participation. When it's cheaper, easier and more popular to kick the ball around on grass, instead of wearing armor and getting into fist fights, you know you're fighting a losing battle. Kids don't want to play it, teenagers can't afford to play it, and adults don't have the time to drive across the country for some ice. As you can imagine, this is a problem. Problem number three, awareness. Given that they invented the sport, it's incredible that not a lot of people know what it is. Ask them how to play ice hockey, they'll assume it's just like field hockey on ice. Ask them to name an NHL team, they'll probably say the Chicago Bulls. Famous hockey player, Tom Brady, right? All right, let's make it real simple. Name a UK ice hockey team. Um. The Chicago Bulls? The lack of awareness is pretty shocking. Not helped at all by the British media that refuses to cover the sport, it's not in the newspapers and they generally don't show it on TV. The awareness is so bad that even entire cities don't even know that they have a professional team. Seriously, that's actually a fact. Problem number four, terrible league structure. In sensible countries such as Canada, they have a defined league structure, and anyone can see the ladder you have to climb in order to reach the top. Does that exist over here? Not really. There's a structure, but it's forever changing. Teams are added and drop out at a moment's notice, and most of the time, the organizers of these leagues don't even know what's happening themselves. Is this team in the Elite League? Or the National League? Or the Scottish League? Or are we just going to kick them out of their own rink and replace them with these guys? Who knows? The predecessor of the Elite League, the Super League, was even more badly organized. A league that started with 10 teams eventually dwindled to just 5. And if they'd carried on, they would have ended up with just 3 teams for an entire league. Mercifully, they pulled the plug way before that even happened. From the ashes of the Super League, the Elite League was formed. Which brings me on to problem number 5 terrible top league. The UK has its own version of the NHL, called the Elite League, but it's not exactly what I'd call elite. It runs on a strict salary cap budget, and while $650,000 is the minimum salary for one player in the NHL, that same money has to pay for your entire team in the Elite League, and your coaches, and your staff, and possibly some pucks on a goalie stick. Because the league offers so little in terms of salary, most professionals tend to play in every other league except this one. You'd have to be pretty desperate to avoid retirement 
if you have to play over here. As you can probably guess, the only quote-unquote star players that the UK attracts are players that are way past their prime. And why would you spend £20 off your hard-earned money watching second-rate ice hockey played by third-rate players when you can use that same money to watch the finest football in the world? It's pretty much a no-brainer. In fact, the highest regular season attendance in the Elite League, 9,403. Wow! And that number is actually pretty generous. Manchester, the third biggest city in the UK, has a professional hockey team that doesn't actually play in Manchester that attracts an average crowd of just 900 people per game. And they play in a facility that looks like this. And this is our version of these guys. Can you see where we're going wrong here? Problem number six, terrible national team. Because of the serious lack of homegrown talent, a lot of the quote-unquote British national team are actually Canadians who we've kindly given a passport to. The government's stance on sports funding is simple. We'll give you money only if you win big. That explains why we're overinvested in such sports as football, rugby and cycling, and way underinvested in ice hockey, basketball, Quidditch and every other sport that we seem to suck at. The British national team rarely gets coverage and playing for your country doesn't pay. Quite literally, you get nothing. This is a team, whilst they play in the International Ice Hockey Federation's top division, routinely loses to that giant ice hockey superpower known as Hungary. And it's not as if we've never had good players born on our shores. Byron Defoe, Steve Thomas, Owen Nolan, all British born, but chose to represent Canada, you know, due to the suckiness. Liam Kirk is the sole British hope to crack the NHL at the moment, but hasn't played once for the team that drafted him. That kind of says it all. But despite these problems, ice hockey isn't a completely dead sport over here. It still has a cult following of diehard fans, albeit a small one. And I know I just ripped on them, but despite no interest, no money, no coverage and no help whatsoever, Team GB are in the same league as the big boys, and that doesn't happen by accident. Okay, they're going to get pummeled by the likes of Russia, Canada, Sweden, etc, but the point is that they're there. TV channels are starting to air British games now as well as the NHL, and speaking of British teams, the ones that are popular and profitable have done so against all the odds, and some of them are even champions of Europe. You'd have to be really well organised to turn a profit in this tiny market. London is now the most likely destination for the KHL. Yes, that KHL. The Russian KHL, who wants a team in London, England. As crazy as that sounds, watch this space because it might be stupid enough to work. The overall point is that there's hope. Will better international performances and better British-born players increase the media coverage and funding from the government? Will this result in a mini-boom and ice facilities sprouting up everywhere? If it does, one thing's for sure, progress will be painfully slow, because it's taken Britain over 150 years just to get to this point. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share and subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comment section below.